team of engineers at Harvard University is developing wearable robots that may someday help patients with neurodegenerative disease. When people think about wearable robots, oftentimes you think about like, you know, Hollywood type embodiments, so the Iron Man suit or things like that. But the reality is like, you know, for a lot of people, they need assistance with some device, but they also don't want to be encumbered by wearing that device. So for us, our strategy and approach has always been, what's the minimal viable device that can provide enough benefit to a person that they would be willing to wear? A device that assists with movement could be very beneficial for patients with limited mobility, such as those with ALS, a disease that affects the neurons in the brain responsible for motor control. So I can tell my finger to move, it won't move. It'll, it just does not get to where it needs to get John Goodson practiced medicine for nearly five decades at Mass General Hospital. He also has ALS. As a physician, I had made the diagnosis of a patient with ALS, and I developed a close relationship and followed this patient right through to his death at home. Um, I made house calls at the end. So I was very aware of ALS and its time course, its manifestations, its impact. I can tell you that the thought crossed my mind, I've got ALS. Through the fall of 21, I went through every alternative possible explanation, but there really wasn't anything else that could explain what I had. Last year, John participated in a trial at Walsh's lab, helping his team to prototype other wearables. But as his condition worsened, he reached out to Walsh for a device that could help him eat. So what we gave to John is a simple version of our uh, prototype that we are targeting for people with stroke and also with ALS. So the concept of our um, goal is having a system that can decode what's the intention of motion of a person with stroke or ALS and automatically adapt the pressure to what they intend to do. Basically, uh, we have a kind of balloon under the arm. Which is connected to a box that pumps compressed air into it. John can control how much support he needs by pressing a button on the box with his foot. I just know many people across our family and others who have had some type of physical impairment and that really impacts their life. So I think, you know, feel somewhat of an obligation as an engineer to think about, you know, how do we overcome those challenges for those people and through new technology as well. It's the sense of, of autonomy and independence. I mean, there are times when I have to be fed. I don't like that. That is, um, not who I am, who I want to be, uh, it's who I've become, which is a consequence of my ALS. Having the device allows me to regain some of that sense of autonomy.